Hey everyone, this is Mr. Z and welcome to this AutoCAD 2018 tutorial series where you're going to learn the basics of AutoCAD 2018 as well as how to design a basic house. Now rest assured, if you are using a previous version or a more recent version of AutoCAD, this tutorial should still hold true, although there might be a few minor changes here and there. But let's go ahead and get started. I would like you to open up AutoCAD 2018 and you should be greeted with a menu that looks like this. Go over to where it says Start Drawing and click on that. Now you're going to notice that there's a lot of tools available to you up here in this ribbon. You also have tabs here that contain additional tools. And this area over here is known as the workspace. And that's where we're going to be making the majority of our creations. So if by chance your tools do not look like my tools, like they're in different order, that's perfectly fine. I'd like you to change the workspace and to do that, I just want you to head down here to where it says Workspace Switching. Click on that and make sure you're set to the Drafting and Annotation Workspace. Now we're just going to be working on that one temporarily and we might switch it as this project progresses. Okay, so one of the cool things about AutoCAD is that you're able to type in commands. And if you type in commands, you're able to do things rather quickly. So for example, if I wanted to draw a line, I would type in L for line, and then I would press enter on my keyboard. And if you do that, and I click with a left click, you'll notice that I'm able to draw a line. And if I click again, I'm able to draw another line. So it's a pretty quick process on drawing lines. Now, unfortunately, houses don't typically use these kind of angles. So I could draw all the lines I wanted to, but they're not going in 90 degrees. And usually that's what I want to happen. So I'm going to press escape a few times just to exit the line tool. And I'm going to go over here where it says ortho mode. And I'm going to select that by turning it on. So I click that on. I turned on ortho mode. And now if I use the line tool, enter, and I click somewhere, you're going to notice that I can only move in 90 degree angles. So that's a very convenient way to draw when you're trying to draw. Okay. And it'll even snap. So I drew lines in two separate ways. The third way you can draw lines is if you don't want to use ortho mode, but you want a different type of angle, you can switch it from ortho mode over to here where it says polar tracking. And I'm going to click on the arrow next to it. And I'm going to switch it to, let's say the 45 degree angle increments. Okay. And I'm going to use the line tool, enter, and I'm going to draw a line. And if you notice, it kind of snaps. It lets me move anywhere, but it kind of snaps when it hits those 45 degree angles. So if you're trying to draw something with a 45 degree angle precision, that might be the tool you want to use. Of course, if 45 degrees isn't what you're going for, there is a plethora of options here as well, and they usually fit most projects. Okay, selecting things in AutoCAD is pretty straightforward. If you want to select everything, let's say from the left, and you click and you click like that, you're going to notice that I can't select these two lines. So I click once, that's a left click. I hover over the options and I click again, but I cannot select those two lines. However, if I went from right to left, so I click and I drag, or I don't drag, I click and I move, and I click again, you'll notice that you select the lines. So when you're going from left to right, you have to make sure you're selecting the entire object before you click to select everything. If you're going from right to left, you just need to select a portion of the object and you'll select everything. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. It's click, hover, click. Not click, drag, click. If you click, drag, you're going to get this option here, which is a much more advanced tool on how to essentially select everything. But it's a little more tricky to use and we don't oftentimes use it unless we're dealing with a project of extreme precision. Now that we feel comfortable drawing lines as well as selecting lines, let's go ahead and delete everything by just selecting everything we've made and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. And we're going to set up our workspace now. To do that, make sure your ortho mode is turned on. We're going to check our snap settings and those are actually very important. Object snap settings are located over here where it says object snap. So click on that arrow, go to object snap settings, and we're going to turn on just a couple to start this project and we might turn on some more later. So first of all, if they're all selected, 
you could deactivate them by going to clear all. We're going to turn on our endpoint, our midpoint, our center, our intersection, and let's also turn on nearest for the time being. So those five are what we're going to start our project with, and we might adjust that later on. What this is going to do is it's going to help additional snaps happen in case we need to get a line to match up with another line. But if we activate all of them, the issue with that is like your line may snap to multiple things and it could be more difficult to work on your project. So I'm going to press OK. So that's now activated. We're going to check our grid spacing. Go over here. Nope. Yep, right over here where it says snap mode. Click over on this option. Go to snap settings. And we're going to have a few things we can change about it. One is the snap X spacing, snap Y spacing. And we're going to change that from 0.5 over to, let's go ahead and say 1. So 1 foot increments. And that's just how it's going to snap, and I'll show you that. And then the grid spacing, we're also going to change that to 1 with a major line every 5 units, or every 5 feet, essentially. So I'm going to press OK, and I'm going to demonstrate what that means. If I use the line tool right now, enter, and I start at one of these points and I hover to the other end, you're going to notice that this total length from one darker line to the other darker line is about five feet. So the spacing between each one is one foot. And to get just a little bit more precision, we're going to turn on this button here. This is called snap mode. So I'm going to click that on. And if I draw a line, you're going to notice, whoops, not a list, a line, enter that it kind of snaps into place now. So I could click exactly where one of these starts and I could travel the exact distance. So it's actually a pretty useful tool when you're trying to draw out lines and use the grids to assist you. Okay, so snap mode's on, the snap settings are on. Last thing we're gonna want to do is create the units for the project. So go to units, so type in UN for units, press enter. And for our drawing units, we're going to change the precision from 0, 0.0000 over to, let's just do 0, 0.00. And we're going to also adjust it from inches over to feet, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and press OK. Awesome. I think everything's ready to go right now. So let's begin with the floor. Our floor plan is going to be the following. It's going to be a 50 foot by 32 foot structure with a small area for a porch. And we're going to start by drawing out a line. Now we're going to draw a polyline here. So on your workspace, I would like you to type in PL for polyline. And a polyline is just a line that after we're done connecting it like this, so I've drawn two lines. Both lines are the same object. So if I click on this line, it selects both lines. Whereas if I just use the line tool to do the same thing and I escape, you'll notice that I select each line individually. So this just helps avoid one step later on in the process. So PL for polyline, enter. And we're going to use the grids to help us make sure you have enough space before. So if each of these are five feet, and I know I'll need 50 feet going in the up direction, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to zoom out a little bit with my mouse scroll wheel. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now I should have enough. And now I'm going to use the grids to assist me. So I'm going to go up 50 units. I'm going to click. Then I'm going to go over here to the side, a total of 30 two units. I'm going to then go bottom, let's say a total of 15. Now let's do, yeah, 15 units is fine. Then I'm going to go out a total of 10 units, go down a total of 20 units, go to the left another 10 units, go down another 15 units, and then I'm going to connect this all together like so. Okay, so that is the base of the floor plan.